Good afternoon. I'm Tiro, and let's keep playing FFL3. Take 13. Hmm. I don't know if I've seen these mushrooms before. Might be all the psychedelic spores. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely seen this. I think this is a... Uh, yeah, it's pretty much an homage to FFL3 Key's body, which is, you know, just shows you what you can do with the Game Boy uh, engine, I guess you would call it. Even has the same music. Alrighty, let's see. In my recent plays of this game, I found out that you, or at least I read that you can have a robot from the beginning, but I actually put it to practice and it works. And here's how you actually do it. First, oh, emblem. Um, all we need is now katana and the crystal to get a sword. But as I was saying for a robot, you can do it if you have a certain discipline, and here's what it is. First, you can only have one robot. Um, there it is. Second, you only use the money you s get from upgrading your equipment on pills. So when you s switch from leather armor to bronze armor, the gold you get from selling, that's what you spend on pills. And then you just follow this basic regimen. First, you only raise your defense and hit points so that your robot is able to survive and along the same lines as your character. And once you get that survivability, you then spend the rest of whatever you've got on attack. And you might not be able to get attack the first couple of times you upgrade, but once you do, your robot will actually become a better fighter than your human, and that's surprising because the humans just, uh, you know, dominate in the physical um, um, game uh, with the weapon proficiencies. Alright, getting lucky, running away. Okay. So yeah, and once you uh, get through the game, you know, a couple of times you'll realize you don't, you know, you have actually too much attack, and so then you could spend stuff on agility. Let's see, and that way leads to the stairway back to Pearl, and we want to go this way, into the stupid crevasse. Hmm. And it's pretty hot in here. And the floor is lava. Literally. Let's see. Although I really don't have to worry about, you know, losing damage. Here the crevasse is just like the underworld. It loops around. You have to go up and down to find every single door, which is annoying. Um, and our first stop is actually, sorry for that, in this little area runes thing. Let's see. Ah, uh, back with the flashing lights. But no current, just more lava. It's kinda odd, why would you have a palace in the bottom of the world? Does this world even have a bottom? It's from a different place. Ah, and that reminds me. I found out that this game is actually heavily inspired by the Lovecraft mythos. And if you don't know, Lovecraft is the horror author that's in between Edgar Allan Poe and Stephen King. Uh, don't all jump up to get, you know, read him because he has a very slow paced, um, you know what, death from above, alright. He has a slow pace such as Bram Stoker or, you know, Orson Welles and everyone's not going to pick him up. But he created this mythos, also known as the Cthulhu mythos, the Cthulhu mythos, or properly the <laughs> mythos. And basically, the Pure Land uh, masters are based off of his uh, gods and such. And the ghost didn't die. Well, I guess you can't kill him twice. And so, similar traits, and that's why the masters uh, in this game look so different from other bosses. Um, the fact that they're from another dimension, uh, that's what Pure Land is in the actual Japanese. Um, that they have multiple mouths and eyes and, you know, places, the bits that aren't supposed to be there. 
Um, they have a psychic power over people and usually enslave them for uh, their... Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Excalibur is very strong and... You know, maybe I can run away now. Okay, good. Um, you have the people of Mu and Lei complaining about um, these voices in their dreams. Can I run away? Okay, good. These voices in their dreams telling them to go to uh, this guy's Ashra's tower and stuff. In fact, the whole Mu uh, subplot is a deep one subplot from Lovecraft. Basically, it's the same um, story in that, you know, these people in this little podunk hick town um, complain about these uh, monsters, or, and basically they just turn out to be one of those uh, deep ones, which actually look very much like the sea hags. Let's see, did I get anything good here? Ooh, E-Ray. I wonder if it's better than the U-Ray, or the Z-Ray. That actually is our final weapon for the Talon. And Dark. Okay. Hmm, I'm ahead of schedule, and I think I wasted all my material. Eh, we're not gonna do a rewind for this. More on Lovecraft. Yeah, a lot of parallels. Oh, the fact that, um, yeah, this enslavement is also with the uh, why Shar wanted the tablet. I kind of missed that point of that. Now, Shar has the tablet, decoded it, and the people in Pure Land are now no longer under the Master's influence. Carefully, can I jump? Nothing there. They always try to trick you up like that. Let's see. And also, I believe... Oh, yeah, there's another trivia. Char and Buzzy, their Japanese names are actually character names from uh, uh, Japanese short stories about the Thulu mythos. Huh. Alrighty. I think this is going to be it. Yes, here we are. Receive Muramasa. Let's try it out. Now, you can hold it. lot of stuff. Alright, come on, get a battle. Dun, da, da, da. Ah. I guess I didn't use all my material. I don't care. Moving forward. Onwards. You know what? I probably should have just exit because I'm a complete idiot. Alrighty. And where do I end up? In the crevasse. Actually, the underworld. Oh yeah, this that's another thing that I don't like about the underworld. It always screws up your traveling situation. Okay, here's an example, hopefully, of a dead end. Nope, more... Ooh, oil. We need oil for the Aegis. Now all we need is the precious metal. Or actually, we could probably find some hunk of tin, because he didn't specify what type of metal. Let's see. Alrighty, let's fight. Okay, let's try out the Muramasa. Do I have it? Yes. Hey. Alrighty, let's do this. Nice. And, ouch. Yes, this is not the Masamune, this is the Murasame, which is the cursed sword. Um, from the other, whoa, that hurts. Mm. And no biggie. Now we'll just guard and just kill you instantly. So yes, this sword is actually cursed and you actually get hit back, although it does good damage. Robot parts? No, because that was bad last time. And we shall see what this door is later. So until next time, I'm Tiro, and have fun gaming. See ya!